Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul, and in this short game to the comp video, we're going to be discussing not only the GeForce GTX 1080 Ti, but also AMD's upcoming Ryzen range of processors. Specifically on Ryzen, it's going to be things such as performance, memory support, uh, actual images of the processor, and other bits and bobs. And with the GTX 1080 Ti, it relies primarily on the date of the release of the graphics card, since it's been well, conspicuously absent in NVIDIA's lineup for some time. We're going to start out with that, but I would also like to thank everyone who's messaged. There have been so many messages over the past couple of days, I would be here for way too long to thank everyone. So instead, I'm just going to do a blanket shout out. I do feel guilty doing that, but I must have gotten like 15 messages just on Facebook and about another half dozen on Twitter and about, I don't know, 10 emails so it's going to take way too long to thank everyone so thank you all very much for the messages and the conversation as well because i don't just like to get news i also like to talk to people via social media um so it's kind of nice but anyway uh, let's talk about the gtx 1080 ti so more sites are apparently independently confirming that the ti is going to be launching very soon including Nordic Hardware, IO Tech, and also we've seen a trace of it on Halo Wars 2, because the Ultra requirements do list a GTX 1080 Ti. That's with the physical version of the title, just to clarify. And it also requires 8 gigabytes of VRAM. Now, according to IO Tech, they believe that the Ti will launch on February 28th. And that also coincides very closely with what Nordic Tech are telling us, but they believe the tie is going to be available on March the 20th to 23rd. So that's going to be essentially, there's two theories. One is it's going to launch on the February the 28th with a special event, and then it's going to be available, let's say, about three weeks later. Or the other theory is that they're going to be basically launching and available in retail on the same date. There are a couple of concerns I've got with the tie. Uh, one of them, of course, is Vega, but ignoring Vega just for a moment, the other most obvious pressing one is what about NVIDIA themselves? I have talked before, uh, late last year, about the rumours that Pascal is going to be getting a refresh. It's going to be a small die shrinker, I believe it's 16 to 14 nm, if memory serves. And from what I can gather, because there's not a huge amount of information, there are going to be a few changes to the Pascal 2.0, for whatever, you know, back, lack of a better term it's going to be. Now, we obviously know that Volta is not going to be available come the normal NVIDIA refresh. So generally, it comes to like May slash June time, and we, of course, get a new graphics card from NVIDIA. It's almost yearly. But... This might be one of those times where NVIDIA just don't feel confident. Maybe it's going to slip a little bit. If not, I wouldn't be surprised if people are a bit pissed. Let's say for the sake of argument, they released the GTX 1080 Ti in, let's say, end of this month. But then in May time, there's going to be a refresh. Okay, everyone knows that the tech industry moves and eventually new things come out. But I do feel that Maybe NVIDIA have arbitrarily held back the tie for a little bit longer. Some suspect that this is because of Vega, but whether that's true or not, well, unfortunately, we just don't know. Videocards.com have managed to get some images of the Ryzen processor, which quite literally has Ryzen written on it, so that's not ambiguous, I suppose. And there are also part numbers as well um, written on the CPU, which tells us, hey, this processor belongs to this specific line of, uh, you know, well, processors. I got through that smoothly, didn't I? Regardless, there is an awful lot of pins as well at the back of the processor, which isn't particularly surprising given um, uh, what we know about the CPU anyway. So this is the more interesting parts of information. I promised you I wasn't just going to keep you here for the CPU images, although they were pretty. One of them is that the... Website NordicHardware.se has insider information, supposedly. Obviously, I always have to point out that it could just be them telling us this and it may be false. Up to you. Anyway, um, supposedly, when the processor launches, 
um, we will have a situation where the GTX 1080 Ti is not going to be enough. Because even the Titan X, for certain games, is going to be a bottleneck to the processor. This is according to sources which have been discussing things with Nordic Hardware.se. Now, I know what you're going to say, but dude, any processor um, can... Uh, can bottleneck a graphics card if you push the hard if you push the resolution up right like if you have a gtx 1080 tie and you're running that with uh, sorry a gtx 1080 and you're running that with like an fx 8350 but then you put rise of the tomb raider on absolute highest graphical settings at 4k it's probably going to be the 1080 that's struggling not the fx simply because of how many pixels you're expecting the damn thing to push well, supposedly, and once again that lovely word, it's going to be not at 4K this occurs. It's going to be actually at 1080p, which is very different. Um, and the reason behind that is because not only is the single-threaded performance of Ryzen going to be very much in line with Intel's CPU architecture, but from what we're hearing, the SMT performance of Ryzen is actually better than Intel. That's actually pretty profound. The very fact of the matter that Ryzen offers better SMT performance than Intel is actually kind of surprising to say the least. So, a few small bits concerning memory. Now, you might recall that there were rumors that Ryzen would unofficially support memory over 3000 megahertz, and that does appear to be the case. The Crosshair 6 Hero actually does have um, a marketing flyer out and it does specify 4 DIMM dual channel memory with DDR4 3200 plus OC support. In other words, it can support over 3200 megahertz with overclocking. That's very bloody impressive. And theoretically, if you're running an 8 core processor with 16 threads total, that does make an awful lot of sense. Another small little tidbit, Biostar are actually listing that the next APUs from AMD are going to be known as NPU, which we can assume is going to be next generation processing unit. APU obviously is accelerated processing unit, which is essentially the amalgamation, the culmination, if you will, of the CPU and GPU being put on the same uh, physical die which is very much like the PS4, the Xbox One, and so on handle things. Whereas NPU, we can make the assumption that there is going to be the integration of the next GPUs from NVIDIA, also known as Vega. And AMD have actually released a white paper which does show off um, some of the APUs, the next generation of APUs from the um, company, which show the Exascale APU. Now, I don't want to go too much into this because honestly it's a white paper and I could be here all day. So instead I'm going to try to remember to link the uh, white paper in the video description. But it's quite interesting to say the least. And you can see that the configuration has up to 32 compute units per chiplet. And each chiplet is projected to provide over 2 teraflops of double precision computation. So that's 16 teraflops total. And there are going to be eight CPU chiplets, four cores each for 32 cores. Essentially, this thing is going to be an absolute monster. And is also stacked with, of course, HBM2. And just honestly, it's going to be absolutely crazy how powerful this thing is. Obviously, this is probably more server orientated. So there's going to be lower end modules for, let's say, you know, running your Dooms and your Quakes on it. In other words, home desktop use. So this is more aiming at like, you know, professional server farms and compute based scenarios. But I did want to bring it to your attention anyway, because as I said, we did get a message this on Facebook. So I kind of wanted to at least uh, acknowledge the message. But with all of that said, I'm going to get going. Um, it's been a very long day for me, to say the least. But hopefully you've enjoyed the video. Um, we will, as I said, be getting a Ryzen CPU no matter what, pretty much. Um, we're testing a couple of bits and pieces in the background as you know the initial review of one of the systems is pretty much done We've got all the benchmarks. It's just been a bit slower because I have been moving which sucks um, 
the video card reviews i've got one of them basically finished the other one is just starting and we also have memory that's just arrived i've actually worked out a deal with a memory vendor and they've agreed to send over 3000 megahertz ram um and i've actually got that and they're also going to send out a different set of ram um which is going to be used for ryzen testing so we'll have like several dif different sets of ram to test out ryzen as well which is kind of handy which Actually, to be fair, isn't really down to me. It's down to you all. Because if you weren't watching the videos, if you weren't consuming the content, if you weren't, you know, messaging us on social media and giving us likes and giving us comments and all this stuff, it wouldn't really happen. So, yeah. Um, as much as I can take credit for putting in the research, you guys have done a lot of the work as well, providing me links, providing me, you know, kind of like someone to bounce ideas off of. And that's really appreciated. So, you know, thanks very much for that. Anyway, I'm going to get going, and um, I've got recording and editing to do. And I'm still trying to fix my internet here at the moment as well, which means that's one of the reasons that I've had to keep videos a bit shorter. Quite simply, the internet upload speed here sucks balls, and I'm trying to get a dedicated line put in for myself, and it's just basically like pulling teeth at the moment. So it's either I have to do this or I have to go to Amy's house, but that's a bit tricky because obviously, well... I can't just keep basically showing up at a door every day with a USB stick. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.